do it. I'm going to put you guys on mute just because it sounds better. All right. Finding that comfortable seat, whatever that is for you. <sighs> Starting to pull the attention inward, forgetting about anything that you had going on before you came into this room, forgetting about anything that you might need to do later. For this next hour, it's just us, just here and just now. Let the shoulders soften down away from the ears. Let the shoulder blades slide down the back. And imagine that little thread connected to the crown of your head, setting you up just a little bit taller than usual. Then bring your attention to your breath. Not trying to control it yet, but just notice what is your baseline? How are you arriving to your practice today? Nice and relaxed with big deep breaths, or is it maybe a little bit tighter, a little bit shorter? Then start to soften through the rib cage. And let the diaphragm drop. Let those inhales start to fill that whole chest space, that whole belly space. Each breath a little bit deeper and a little bit longer than the one before. Now we're just going to take a moment here and breathe. As you inhale, notice the belly expand. If it's not expanding, try to really relax. Let the diaphragm drop. Trying to just gradually slow that breath. Feel that shift in the body from that sense of running and doing things to that sense of sitting and being still. And take the biggest, deepest inhale of the day. Fill that whole chest space, that whole belly space. Then through the mouth with a sigh, exhale completely. <sighs> Get that last bit of air out. Then inhale the arms out and up. Taking in that nice, fresh air. Bringing the palms to touch. Exhaling down through heart center. Try and keep that nice, slow breath going. Inhale out and up. Bringing the palms to touch, exhaling down through heart center. Good, last time, inhaling out and up. This time when the palms come to touch, interlace those fingers, exhale, tip right. Inhaling center, exhale, tip left. Try to let the movement take the whole breath. Inhaling center. Now dropping that right arm down, exhale, take your time. Try and keep that left sit bone glued to the ground. Good. Nice use of a block there, Gail. Very smart, very wise indeed. So active reach with those fingers. Feel that stretch through that whole left side body. From that hip all the way through the rib cage, all the way up in that shoulder and the outside of that arm, maybe in your tricep, maybe even in the forearm, the fingers. And a couple of big deep inhales into that left side rib cage. Feel that expansion. And inhaling back to center. Exhaling left, take your time. Keeping that right sit bone glued to the ground. Good. Active stretch through that right side body. And a couple of big inhales in that right side rib cage. Stretch those intercostal muscles. Good. Inhaling back to center. 
and exhale, float those arms down. Left hand to the right knee, right hand behind. Inhaling tall, then exhale, twist belly first, then ribs, shoulders, finally the gaze. Think about growing taller with each inhale and twisting just a little bit deeper with each exhale. And be gentle with the neck. You don't need to crank it to the side. Just a little stretch is good. And big inhale. Exhale, return that gaze to center, followed by the rest of the body. Right hand, left knee, left hand behind. Inhale, tall. Exhale, twist belly first, then ribs, shoulders, finally the gaze. Growing taller with each inhale, twisting just a little bit deeper with each exhale. And one more big inhale. Exhale, return that gaze to center, followed by the rest of the body. So we're headed for that tabletop. Roll over the knees if it works, otherwise kick those feet out to the side. Either way is fine. Big inhale once you get there, then exhale, sit back, child's pose, bringing those hips down to the heels, resting that forehead on the mat. Now, if the forehead's not making it, you might take those knees wide. And maybe there's a block handy. You could also put that under your forehead. Up to you. So think about letting all of those joints settle into place here. Let as many of those muscles relax as you can. And inhale, coming forward, tabletop. Cat pose, exhale, press that ground away, rounding that spine, tuck the tailbone, gaze drops to the navel. Really feel that stretch through the shoulders, through the upper back. Cow pose, inhale, let that belly drop, tailbone lift, gaze gently lift. Then swing that torso right, up into cat pose, exhale. Swing it left, down into cow pose, inhale. Keep it moving, soften through the shoulders, soften through the hips. Find all your tight spots, all your sore spots. And this can be as big or as subtle as you'd like. I have some students that's like, whoa, slow down. And then other students that are just really, really uh, conservative. Totally up to you, whatever feels good. If you wanna go crazy with it, go crazy with it. All right, switching directions whenever you're ready. Don't forget about your neck. Get your neck involved. All right, returning that spine to neutral. Now we're gonna step the feet back, plank pose. So check out your fingers, make sure they're nice and spread. Make sure you're pressing down into the mat with all of those knuckle mounds. Try to take the weight out of the base of your wrist. So engage all of those knuckle pads, get the fingers going.
Think about pulling the belly button to the spine here and stay lifted up out of the shoulders. Try not to let yourself sag down, stay lifted. Long, slow, deep breaths. Salud, David. <laughs> All right, so option here. You can press it back to a down dog. You can set it back to a child's pose or come down to the forearms, forearm plank. One minute. Is something not working, Charlie? <laughs> well, the volume was getting so soft. Ah, okay. I'm actually talking soft. I can talk louder. Well, nah. Hang in there. Pull that belly button to the spine. Nearly there. Charlie, I think you just wanted out of the forearm plank. All right, set those knees down, set back child's pose. Throw those arms behind you, give those shoulders a break. Well done, you guys. All right, reach those hands way out in front of you. Plant those palms shoulder width or wider apart. Spread those fingers wide. Tuck those toes under, lifting those hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Take a moment, pedal out those heels. Maybe shift those hips from side to side, whatever feels good. Stretching those calves. Good. And you want those hands to be way out in front of you. So if you're in a position where your shoulders are kind of over your hands, try to press yourself way back. All right. Looking between the hands, walk those feet forward. Inhale to a halfway lift when you get there. Exhale, forward fold. Feel free to bend your knees here. Especially if this is the first forward fold you've done today, really put a bend in those knees. That's totally okay. If you like that ragdoll pose, go for it. Elbows in the hands, gentle rock from side to side. All right, put a little bend in those knees if there's not one already. Engage that core, think in reverse swan dive, inhale, rise. Beautiful, exhale, forward fold, sun stretches. Heart lifted on the way down. Inhale, halfway lift. Forward fold, exhale. Inhale, rise. 
Good. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Forward fold, exhale. Inhale, rise. One more, just like that. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Forward fold, exhale. Inhale, rise. All right, we're gonna do one Surya Namaskar A, but take it slow. Make sure that you're hitting each pose and not just flying through it, right? So big inhale here. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Take your time here. Plant those hands. Hop or walk those feet back. Bend those elbows to a 90. So you're in that plank pose, bent elbows. Elbows are grazing your rib cage. Then shift forward to the tops of the feet. Pressing up, inhale. Up dog cobra. Thighs can be on the ground or off here. If they're on the ground, it's cobra. If they're off the ground, it's up dog. Totally up to you. Then lift the hips up and back. Exhale, down dog. Good. Taking a few breaths here. All right, looking between the hands, step that right foot forward. Staying up on those back toes. Find that strength in the core. Inhale, rise. Good. Everybody looks super duper stable today. Awesome. If you are feeling really stable and this is super easy, think about lowering down. Bring that front thigh parallel to the floor or even farther. Bring your attention to your breath. What's going on there? Is it nice and long and smooth? If it's a little bit choppy, try and slow it down. We're going to press our endurance a little bit today in these poses, both in these held poses and in the stretches. So we're not going to have quite as many poses today as usual, but they're going to be a little bit longer and a little bit more intense. Check out that breath. Ujjayi breath can help a lot here. And it's that ocean sound at the back of the throat on the inhale and exhale through the nose. Beautiful. Bring those fingers down to the mat. Setting that left knee down, top of that left foot down. All right, so that left leg is stretched way behind us. We're not just sitting on top of the knee. So we're not here, we're here. If it's possible, if your body's not digging it, don't worry. All right, so we're gonna stretch through this, the front of this thigh. So bring your right arm to your right thigh. Then inhale that left arm high. Now you should feel a heck of a stretch through the front of that left thigh, through that left hip. Think about pressing those hips down into the floor. All right, now if you're able to, bring that other arm to meet, maybe interlacing those fingers. 
Check on that breath. All right, bringing both of those hands down inside of that thigh or inside of that right foot. Set yourself up lizard lunge so you can lower down to the forearms if your body lets you do it. You can stay lifted if that's what your body's asking for. And don't feel like you have to rush into it, right? These are a little bit longer poses than usual, so take your time. And check out your hips here. Are they basically parallel to the floor? Excellent if they are. There's a tendency to fall off onto that left hip. Try not to. Try to keep those hips parallel to the floor. Long, slow, deep breath. Excellent, all right. Lift yourself up, then we're gonna shift back, pulling the hips back and popping up those front toes for half split. Ardha Hanumanasana. I'll turn sideways. So it's like this. Now, blocks are great here if you wanna be lifted a little bit more. And then if if you're working towards your full splits or if you can do the full splits, just extend that back leg behind you. Think about softening into place. And your body will tell you where you should be. If it's yelling at you to back up, listen to it, back up. Check on that breath. All right, shifting the weight back to the bottom of that front foot. Plant those hands down. Then you have an option here. 
You can step that foot straight back to a down dog, or you can take it through a flow, up to you. Beautiful. Shifting as much of that weight back into those hips and out of the shoulders, out of the wrists as you can. Melting that heart towards the floor. It's totally okay to put a bend in those knees. And looking between the hands, step that left foot forward. Staying up on those back toes. Engaging that core. Inhale, rise. All right, settle into your stance here. Making sure that knee is over the ankle or behind. Now, if you're super wobbly on this side, you might bring your feet apart a little bit. That can sometimes help. Long, slow, deep breath. And maybe you wanna lower down after you've been in the pose for a while. Maybe then it feels good to lower down. Check on that breath. That back leg is like a tree trunk. Ujjayi breath can be awesome here. Few more seconds. All right, bring those fingers to the floor, setting that right knee down, top of that right foot down. All right, bringing that left forearm to that left thigh, inhale those right fingers high. And remember that right leg is stretched way out behind you. Good. And then if you can, so thinking about letting those hips sink forward and towards the floor here, major stretch in that right hip, that right psoas. Yep, totally okay to stay supported with one arm. You can even use two if you want. Check out that front ankle, make sure it's not too far back. Excellent. Bring those hands down inside that right or that left foot. Then stay lifted as long as you want to, eventually lowering down into your lizard lunge.
If it starts to get intense, bring your attention to your breath. It'll help you through. All right, bring those hands to the mat, slowly, gently lift yourself up. Then scooching those hips back, popping up those front toes, half split. And again, you can be all the way lifted if you want to. You can be way up here. If you have blocks, maybe you can be here. Or you can come down, thinking about bringing that forehead towards the shin. You want to work towards that full split, extend that right leg back behind you. Beautiful. Working the weight back onto the bottom of that front foot. Plant those hands on either side. Tuck those right toes under, lift that right knee. Then option to step it straight back to down dog or take it through a flow. Up to you. Meet you in down dog. All right, looking between the hands, step that right foot forward. Left toes coming to a 45 or maybe even a little bit sharper. Line that right knee up over that right ankle, then inhale the arms up, warrior one. Check on those back toes, make sure they're pointed pretty much forward. If you have that back foot too parallel to the back edge of the mat, it puts a lot of torque in that knee. All right, dropping those hands behind the back, interlace those fingers, punch down, roll the shoulders back, Lift the heart, extend that front knee, big inhale. Exhale, tipping forward from the hips, pyramid pose. Lifting those hands off the back, even if it's just a little teeny tiny bit.
and release those hands down either to the mat or to your shin, maybe even to your thigh, wherever they end up. Okay, now you're welcome to stay right here, but if you're feeling pretty strong in this pose, then engage the core, lengthen the spine, really plant that left palm on the inside of that right foot, then inhale that right shoulder and stack it on top of the left, turning the whole body to face the right side. Then extend that arm up. Paravrita Trikonasana, revolved triangle pose. Beautiful. Now, if you need to be up on the toes of that left foot, that's totally okay. All right, big inhale. Exhale, sweep those right fingers down back into that pyramid pose. Then put a bend in that knee, come up on those back toes. We're gonna step that front foot back either to down dog or take it through a flow. Beautiful. All right. Looking between the hands, step that left foot forward. Right toes pivoting to that 45 or even sharper. Get that knee lined up over that ankle. Engage that core. Inhale, rise. Warrior one. Beautiful. All right, big inhale, exhale, drop those arms behind the back, interlace those fingers, punch down, gently roll the shoulders back, lift the heart, extend that front knee, one more big inhale, exhale, folding forward from the hips, try to keep those hands a little bit away from the low back. Beautiful. Go ahead and release the hands down to the thigh or shin or floor, wherever they end up. All right, now you're welcome to stay here or plant that right palm just inside of that left foot. Then inhale that left shoulder to stack on top of the right, turning the torso to face the left side, opening that left arm. Also, totally okay if you need to come up on those back toes here. Beautiful.
and big inhale. Exhale, sweep those left fingers down. Put a bend in that front knee. Come up on those back toes. Then either step that front foot back uh, straight to down dog or take it through a flow. Up to you. All right, set those knees down. Have a seat back on your heels. So I'm going to introduce a pose here that is really pr pretty tough. And if you have any trouble with, with the meniscus in your knees, this is something that you probably don't even wanna try, right? If it's, if it's one of those, just stay here and that's totally okay. Okay, so something that makes this pose easier is if you have a block, you can sit on the block. And then what we're gonna do is gently let our feet come out to the side so that we have an internal rotation of the thigh bones. You see that? I'll turn sideways. And then the feet come a little bit wider than the knees so that the thigh bones are having to internally rotate. Now be careful with your knees here. If the uh, thighs aren't wanting to internally rotate and you force it, all of that pressure goes right on the meniscus and you don't, you don't want that, right? Okay, so if you don't have a block, then it's just like this. The knees are together, the feet are slightly out to the side. Be slow, be gentle, be careful, listen to your body. For most people, this is pretty intense. We don't get a whole lot of internal rotation of the thighs. Like even in yoga class, like we, we work on the external rotation a lot, but not so much the internal. Be slow, be careful, be gentle. If you feel a lot of pressure, pull your feet back together. Give yourself a break, right? This is called hero pose. Turn. David's sign language. So see how the, the feet are outside of the knees? More, all the way? I'm gonna get a turntable. <laughs> all right, see that? So the butt is sitting down, feet are outside the hips. Hero pose. Now really think about the internal rotation of the thighs while you're here. If you feel a lot of pressure in the knees, go ahead and pull the feet back together. Give yourself a break. And the block is really helpful here. Good. So there are people who can pull their feet all the way out, like here. <laughs> Be careful, David. Because while this is a, a great um, way to get some additional internal rotations, it is dangerous on the knees if you push, don't push. All right, now if you're feeling oddly comfortable here, you can walk yourself back. Now I would suggest if you're gonna do this, make sure you have a friend handy that can save you <laughs> if you get there and go, oh my God, I can't get up, right? Good. All right, so bring those fingers to the ground, lift the hips up, 
Bring the knees back together, swing the feet back in. Good, all right. Drop those hips off to the side, swing those feet out front. All right, now we're gonna go straight into Baddha Konasana, so we're gonna go into that external rotation of the thighs. So we're gonna bring those feet in, let the knees fall out, let the thighs, the thigh bones roll back and down. Yep, a little rock from side to side might be just what the doctor ordered. Good. All right. Now, if you're feeling pretty good, lift that heart, then start to bring yourself forward. The hips are one of the first things that lock up as we age, too. If we can keep them stretched out and open into our old age, that'll be fantastic. Except Dixie. Dixie doesn't count. She's like a superhero over there. <laughs> so make sure you're not feeling any pressure in those knees. If you do, back it up just a little bit. Yep. Think rolling back and down with those thighs all the way down, no matter how low you are. Keep that in mind. All right. Press yourself up, extend those legs out in front, roll out those hip sockets. Oh, holy moly. All right. So the time flew by and we have like, we have only like 12 minutes left. So I'm gonna cut some stuff out to make sure that we do have a full Shavasana here. So let's extend that left leg. We'll tuck that right leg. We're gonna make this just a pretty quick forward fold. Inhaling the arms up, exhale, forward fold. Make sure it's coming from the hips. All right, bring those fingers to the mat. Gently walk yourself up. I know it's short, but we're going to run out of time. Scooching to the left side of the mat, bring that right foot to that left knee, right fingers behind. Then sweep yourself up onto that right knee and shin. Maybe those right toes swing back more towards that right wrist. Then press those hips forward, trying to get that right thigh straight up and down. Those left toes are pointed, the heart's open, reaching behind you. Ah, really think about lengthening the spine here, especially through that low back. And one more big inhale. Exhale, slow and with control, lower yourself down. Beautiful. Extending that right leg, tucking that left leg. Inhaling the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. And gently press yourself up, scooching to the right side of your mat, bring that foot to the knee, 
left fingers behind, then sweep yourself up onto that left knee and shin, press those hips high, maybe sweeping that left foot back towards that left wrist, lengthening through that spine, especially that low back. Really lengthen. Good, one more big inhale. Exhale, slowly, gently lower yourself down. Ah, well done. Coming to your back, bring those feet mat width apart, windshield wiper those knees. Uh, then give those knees a squeeze, big inhale, exhale, drop them to the right. Try to keep that left shoulder down if you can. If it doesn't stay there, no big deal. And gently bring those knees back to center. Give them a big squeeze, big inhale. Exhale, drop them left. And gently bring those knees back to center. Give them one last squeeze, lifting that forehead up towards the knees for that full back stretch. One last big inhale. Exhale, extend into Shavasana. Take a moment, get yourself perfectly comfortable. Maybe tucking under those shoulder blades, maybe lifting the head, tucking the chin and laying that long neck down. Now relaxing the forehead, relaxing the eyebrows, all of those muscles around the eyes, relax them, let them go, softening the cheeks, letting them melt down towards the ears, relaxing the jaw, letting the tongue fall away from the roof of the mouth. With each exhale, feeling your body pressing heavier and heavier into your mat. With each exhale, falling deeper and deeper into relaxation. For these next six minutes, just relax.
bringing your awareness back into your body. Maybe wiggling your fingers. Maybe wiggling your toes. Maybe reaching your arms overhead for a big full body. And when you're ready, rolling onto whichever side is the most comfortable for you. They bring these last few moments of relaxation. Then using as little effort as possible, gently press yourself up to a comfortable seat, keeping your eyes closed or lowered. And take a moment, feel into your body, feel anything that's changed. Feel that fresh life, that fresh energy. And inhaling the arms out and up. Bringing the palms to touch. Exhaling down to the third eye for the mind. Exhaling to heart center for the body and spirit. Namaste. Thank you guys.